Mother Teresa. She would let the patient suffer. What historical figure was a horrible person despite everyone thinking they were great? Steve Jobs. He refused to acknowledge his daughter until forced, provided no help or support during her upbringing, treated his employees and business partners like sh asterisk t, getting people fired for no good reason, and then sending smiley faces when the firing was confirmed. Christopher Columbus. Columbus and his crew believed there were gold fields in the province of Sikao on Haiti. He and his men ordered all natives 14 years or older to collect a certain amount of gold every three months. Natives who didn't collect enough gold had their hands cut off. But it was an impossible task. There was virtually no gold around, only a little dust in streams. Many natives fled and were consequently hunted down and killed by the Spaniards. The Spaniards thought nothing of knifing Indians by tens and twenties, and of cutting slices off them to test the sharpness of their blades. Las Casas adds two of these so-called Christians met two Indian boys one day, each carrying a parrot. They took the parrots, and for fun beheaded the boys. Coco Channel was an artsy spy. Yes, she was an incredible designer, and she's probably one of the most influential humans of the 20th century, based on the number of people who have worn clothing directly inspired by her over the past 100 years. She really did change the way women dress in a truly radical way, and I respect that, Nedwear. Feminized men's were, ditching the corset, transforming black into an everyday color, the essential skirt suit, costume jewel synthetic fragrances in perfume, the list goes on. But she was an artsy spy. Coco was a wretched and he see might, like so many other members of the European elite during the 30s. She dated a number of staggeringly wealthy British aristocrats and they'd all sit around talking about the protocols of Zion, trying to figure out whether any members of the royal family were secretly Jews, etc. When war broke out, the two Jewish brothers who ran her perfume empire, Aka Channel No. 5, the best-selling perfume in the world then and now, had to flee to the US for safety. How did Coco respond? By writing to the Nazis, to ask them to transfer ownership over to her, a good Aryan, so she could make more money. But that's not the half of it. She fell in love with a dashing German spy named Spitz who'd been seducing blue bloods all over France and England for years leading up the war. Coco was a useful woman, she was simply one of the richest women in the world, and she knew everyone in the British aristocracy, including her old hunting buddy and dear friend, Winston Churchill himself. She and Spitz socialized with all the biggest Nazi names in town, especially Otto Abitz, the Nazi ambassador to France, who invited them to every party in town. Spitz convinced her to join the Abwehr, Aka the German secret service, and make trips to Spain. Operating under the code name Westminster, she attempted to broker a separate peace between Germany and England. In the meantime, she may or may not have reported at least one woman at the Hotel Ritz whom she suspected of being Jewish to the SS. She had a grand old time going on her adventures, and wrote about the excitement of working for the Abwehr in her private notes. Channel was arrested only a few days after the liberation of Paris. Absolutely everyone in town knew what she'd been doing, and who she'd been doing it with, but for reasons unknown she was released without charges. It's widely believed that Winston Churchill personally intervened. It might be, because the two of them had been close friends for decades. It might be, because she was going to embarrass the SH asterisk T out of Britain by outing all the anti-Semites and pro nazis in the British aristocracy, including the recently abdicated Edward VIII who used his ducking honeymoon as an excuse to tour Nazi Germany and shake Hitler's hand. She spent the rest of her life being a nasty, but amorphine addict living in the Hotel Ritz. The House of Channel has very very little to say about the matter, and every few years a few more bits of damning evidence are declassified from the vaults. Albert Einstein wasn't a great guy. Brilliant, sure, but kinda douchy in his personal life. 
he refused to marry his longtime lover for years, even after she got pregnant. The child was assumed to be given up for adoption, but no record has ever been found. He and his wife, Maliva Mary, worked together on their research. People saw them do it. They made jokes about it at parties. He proudly told people that she did all his calculations. They only put his name on their work and he went on to claim all the credit, ignoring any work she had done. Part of their agreement was that she would get the Nobel Prize money, but he tried to prevent that. She raised two children, one schizophrenic, took care of the house, and tutored to bring in extra money because he couldn't get a job for a long time. He started getting more notoriety and then began an affair with his first cousin. He moved to a different country to be with his new hillbilly mistress. He divorced his wife and quickly married the new younger model. He had rules she had to abide by, such as leaving the room immediately when told, and not expecting or asking for any sort of affection, except when necessary for appearance's sake. Elsa, his second wife, was dying and he worked non-stop, because he didn't know what to do, I guess. She was basically abandoned her last few months. He cheated on both his wives, numerous times, ignored his children. Oh, and he was pretty into his second wife's daughter and thought about marrying her instead. Thomas Edison. The classic corporate giant stealing and claiming the ideas of his subordinates, and he was pretty awful to Nikola Tesla. And that's where history gets weird. It's sort of myth that Edison did it to prove that Tesla's AC power was unsafe. According to historians, Edison never attended the event and the AC vs DC wars was almost 10 years old at that point. However Edison's film company was brought in to film the event. Benito Juarez. He was the type of president who kills his opposition instead of negotiating. He did a lot of illegal executions. He was going to be executed in Guadalajara, however one of his ministers convinced the soldiers not to kill him with the famous phrase Alto, Los Valiant no assassinum. The soldiers forgave his life, and risked his as the disobey an order. Well, as soon as Juarez returned to Mexico City, he immediately ordered to kill all of those soldiers with no mercy. Source, my sister worked with the sergeant's descendant. After Juarez's government, there's a period known as the Porfiriato, where Porfirio Diaz was Mexico's president for 30 years. It was possible, just because there was no opposition alive. Juarez suddenly died in 1872 from a heart attack. It's believed that a woman, to avenge his husband, worked on his home as a maid, and when she had the opportunity, she put an infusion of Vintia Miller a herb known by the natives for being poisonous, and caused a heart attack 21 days, Vintian dies, after it was drank. Andrew Jackson. He's always presented as the common man's president, but he treated the Native Americans terribly. He also had a huge rowdy party, and trashed the White House. He defied a Supreme Court order, and removed the American Indians from their land in that act, and should have been impeached, if not thrown in prison altogether. Alexander Graham Bell. Alexander Graham Bell didn't invent the telephone. Innocenzo Manzetti made one first, but didn't have enough money for the patent, so Graham Bell stole it from him fought for the inclusion of deaf people. By trying to outlaw sign language, and forbidding deaf people from marrying to prevent the birth of more deaf people, whom he saw as the defective race. Alexander the Great. The only thing Alexander the Great was actually great at was killing loads of people, to create an empire, that immediately fell apart. And the Achaemenid Persian Empire he conquered, was already in decline. One of my history professors had called him a psychopath, and pointed out that for every territory he had conquered he seemed to quickly lose interest in running it, and would just shove the administration on someone else, before running off to invade another country. Sure, he had an amazing ability, in leading troops for miles and miles, and fighting against enemy forces rarely encountered by the Macedonians and Greeks. But he had to constantly deal with his armies constantly losing morale, 
and deserting slash despising him, up until they finally mutinied and forced him to turn back, yet he still, still demanded his forces to tear through various Indian tribes for essentially no other purpose except for possibly pillaging food and supplies. It was pretty obvious that he already knew that he'd never be able to keep modern day Punjab under his or his heirs control, but he kept trying to launch his men against the people anyway. It's one of the reasons why I roll my eyes whenever people gush about him or write fictional books about being one of his many wives. He's the polar opposite of Pericles, who although was hated, for good reason, at least tried to maintain an incredible level of control and discipline over his men and his besieged Athens during the Peloponnesian War. Ronald Reagan. Oh god I hate how even Democrats can look at that horrible president and say wow he sure was a nice dude. Yeah. For the cameras, he was an actor. That was literally his job. Here's all the horrible sh asterisk t he did, that I know of. Created the racist myth of the welfare queen commonly depicted as a black woman who pops out babies and commits fraud to receive more money from the government to gain support for slashing the social safety net. Refused to take action on the AIDS crisis because he didn't want people to think he was helping the LGBT community. Illegally sold weapons to Iran, our enemy, and used the funds to support the Contras, a far-right paramilitary organization in Nicaragua that had a knack for slaughtering villages. Joke that African delegates to the UN were primitive and referred to them as monkeys. It's very possible that under his term, he let the CIA funnel crack cocaine into primarily black communities to stifle their development. I don't think it's been proven like the Iran Contra affair, but I believe it. Continued Nixon's disastrous war on drugs, which itself was created to keep blacks and liberals demonized, and referred to marijuana as the most dangerous drug, even while crack cocaine existed. Repealed the fairness doctrine, paving the way to cable media becoming a giant partisan hack system, and leading to the creation of Fox News, which was created to be a mouthpiece of the Republican Party. No political party should have its own mainstream news network, the news is supposed to remain unbiased. Thanks Ronnie, for giving us Hannity and O'Reilly, and that rapist Roger Ailes. As governor of California. He passed gun control laws banning open carry because the Black Panthers began patrolling their own communities in response to rampant police brutality. Other than that one incident, he was an ardent Second Amendment fan. Gun rights for whites, but not for blacks, I guess. Injected fundamentalist Christianity into American politics more than any modern president before him. I put the blame for the rise of the religious right squarely on his shoulders. For non-Americans who don't understand why this is that big of a deal, the Constitution explicitly states that the United States is a secular nation and that religion has no place influencing our laws. Reagan saw that, and promptly sh asterisk t on it. Everyone credits him with the fall of the Berlin Wall, but all he did was sympathize with those who wanted it gone. In the end, it was the Berliners who tore it down was a proponent of trickle-down economics, a failed economic belief that, just like communism, was doomed to fail, because of human greed. Rich folks aren't gonna let us benefit from that money, they're gonna hoard it, or spend it on useless mansions. Reaganomics was a scam. Instituted tax cuts that hurt the middle class. Those cuts were only for the rich, and they were entirely reliant on trickle-down economics not being B-U-L-L-S-H asterisk T. But they were, and the middle class suffered. In general, he constantly talked about how he was gonna shrink the government, but just like every modern president, he only made it bigger, and not in the good parts, like environmental regulation. Bush senior lost re-election, because he ducked up on his no new taxes promise, but Reagan broke his biggest promise, and still got two terms. Slashed federal spending on programs that helped poor people, like subsidized housing and job training. Was so focused on building up the military, that he slashed funding for essential services like education. Little Billy can't grow up, 
to work at the missile defense lab, if he can't ducking Reed, is responsible for the creation of the Taliban through his rampant military fetishism, and need to stick America's nose into places it doesn't belong. Vetoed a bill that was to sanction South Africa's apartheid regime. His own party had to override that veto in Congress. Even the GOP wasn't having his SH asterisk T that day. Jacked up our deficit from the billions to the trillions. And all to feed our already bloated military. Is responsible for paving the path for the modern GOP. Giving us George Bush Jr. and Donald Trump. Two of the worst presidents in American history. Bush Sr. was okay. But still not all that great. <laughs> Mother Teresa. She would let the patient suffer as she told. There is something beautiful, in seeing the poor accept their lot, to suffer it like Christ's passion. The world gains much from their suffering. Yep. That's what she actually told. Also the forced conversion. Horrible conditions the patients had to live in. Racism. Lack of medicine is just the tip of iceberg. She also stole all the money, that was given to her thousands of care centers which were actually death centers. They never bought medicine had blankets or decent food. Christopher Hitchens wrote a great book about her, and called her a sadist who ran a death cult. She loved the idea of people dying in her hospice centers. <laughs> P.T. Barnum. He is nothing like how the greatest showman portrays him. He was little more than a scam artist who exploited vulnerable people for money. Animals he used in his acts were frequently abused, and he bought African American slaves to parade around in his sadistic freak shows. He once bought an elderly slave called Joyceth, and pretended that she was George Washington's nanny. She was blind and partially paralyzed. Also, he pulled out all of her teeth to make her appear 160 years old. As if that wasn't enough, after she died, he charged the public 50 cents each to attend her autopsy. That's just one example of the hundreds of mentally handicapped, disabled, and enslaved people he abused in his pursuit of fame and money. Man. Duck that guy. Nelson Mandela. He cuddled up to the racists, to strike a deal to end apartheid. South Africa is still massively divided, more on class than race, but they are similar dividing lines. He also set up the armed wing of the ANC which makes him a terrorist. He also was very friendly with lots of the oppressive African leaders like Gaddafi. He wasn't the beacon of peace that he's made out to be. When he died I was getting sick of seeing everyone praise him, and I made a point to identify his militant past and acts of terrorism. He encouraged others to bombings. Innocent people die. Thank you for watching. Hit like and subscribe. For more videos.